Have you ever been in a meeting and people are talking but nobody seems to be listening? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, I have, think you have. I have, I have been so in there's some skills that you can use okay. to help people uh, listen to each yeah. other as well as be understood and l uh, lower the level of conflict, mm. perhaps. That would be nice. Yeah, it's called paraphrasing. Okay, it sounds really easy, but. I think you know a lot more about it. You want to tell us about so it? So let's get into this okay, idea so what of paraphrasing. Is, what is paraphrasing? So paraphrasing is is a, a listening skill. Okay. And it's a listening skill in the sense that what we do is we listen to hear not just what somebody says. We also want to hear what's underneath the surface. So we want to hear all those emotions mm -hmm. and all those beliefs and values. And, uh, and so we have to think of paraphrasing that we're going to verbally do as a listening skill because it's about that other person mm. being heard and understood. Okay. So that's what mm -hmm. paraphrasing is. So why would you even want to do it, do you think? Yeah. Well, you kind of tapped on it early mm -hmm. with the introduction to this. We want to, we want to tap into paraphrasing because we know several things about group dynamics. Mm -hmm. One of them is that if a person feels that they truly have been listened to, not just in words, they've also been listened to in emotion mm -hmm. and also listened to from their belief system, then they're gonna feel, <clears throat> they're gonna feel respected. They're going to feel that they've been treated with dignity. They're going to feel that they are a part of a group because of that connection. And one of the things that's most important is whatever emotion they're having, if it's emotion that gets in the way like anger or disgust or contempt or frustration, when somebody feels others understand the emotion they're having, then they'll have that emotion at a lower intensity. And what that does is it helps reduce the heat in the room, the conflict in the room, mm -hmm. so that people can kind of work better. So not only you are you're making people feel that they're being heard, yeah. but you're also, by acknowledging the feelings, telling people you have these feelings and they're legit, mm -hmm. and now we can, let's do it, let's work together so we can Absolutely. get beyond it. And I think what's, what's, what's nice about it is that you're doing it in a way that's authentic and mm -hmm. genuine. So you're not, you're not like saying, oh, you're angry, so I understand. Right. <laughs> So it's about them <laughs> as opposed to about your perception. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. so how do you do that? How do you paraphrase? Well, we, we kind of use three of them really a lot okay, in so the work that we do. Tell me the first one. So the first one is a clarifying paraphrase okay. that, that you select words so that that person feels that not only have been listened to and understood, there's clarity to what they've said. So you're not parroting back what they're saying? Absolutely not parroting back. You're going to use different words okay. than they used. And the second one? So the second one is called a summary paraphrasing. And that's when somebody's talking and they might, they might put out a whole bunch of ideas or a whole lot of information. And you choose the summary paraphrase because you feel in that moment that they've said so much that if you put everything they've said into a, a summary package, that they will feel that you understand. So you're kind of organizing their thoughts for them. You really are organizing it and putting it in a, in a, con, in a container, in a, okay. in a package for them that they, they say, yeah, that's exactly it. And then what's the third and one? Third one's toughest, and yet it's the most, Oh, it's the one that just changes, it changes the energy of that person so much for the hmm. good. What is it? And it's called shift conceptual focus. And it's a paraphrase that taps the beliefs and the values of that person way more than just the words they put out, right. way more than just the idea. And, and part of the reason why it, it works, we think, is because when we... When we talk to someone and we tap their value, if we connect with their values and what they hold true in their heart, their beliefs, then they really feel understood because beliefs and values are just held so dearly. So what you're really doing is processing not what they're saying, mm. but really the background behind what they're huge, saying. Huge, huge, yeah. So, background and then really deep in their heart. Mm. That must be difficult sometimes. Sometimes it's difficult. 
and uh, and when you practice it and you get like really good with this stuff you can have wonderful meetings and wonderful meetings where there's emotion and conflict and battles but the battles are about the ideas and not the people. Oh, what a difference. Oh, it's huge. So what happens if you paraphrase yeah. and it's incorrect? Yeah. Ooh, you know what you can do? You can have fun with that. In fact, when you start practicing paraphrasing, do it wrong on purpose. Why? Because when you paraphrase, <clears throat> you get corrected. However, you don't get corrected because you were wrong. You get corrected because a person didn't feel they were understood. Oh. And we do it with words and there's a word that we can't use when we paraphrase what's that word I why not because if you say so if I heard you right who's that about you yeah and I'm paraphrase not has to be about the other person so we'll throw out the I pronoun and use the you, you pronoun. So, okay. so for you, it's really, and so that's that idea. And the idea is that if I paraphrase incorrectly, mm -hmm. I'm just getting more information. Absolutely. And I don't and have to worry about being it. perfect. Oh, you'll fix it. They'll fix it for you, and it's mm -hmm. just delightful. So <laughs> so we're going to look at uh, clarifying, and, and uh, it's sometimes called acknowledging also. Okay. And it's that idea that somebody says something, and your paraphrase back is going to be one that just clarifies the idea okay so let's try it this way so what are <clears throat> what are uh, two or three things that that you think are really important in uh, in um, group work let's see what happens um, you, in an example yeah. for, in a meeting yeah. I think group work is mm -hmm. that people have to listen mm -hmm. to the ideas not attack the people yeah. I also think that they yeah. don't have to, um, the sidebars have got to stop mm -hmm. because it means you're not listening. Mm -hmm. So it's about, it's about their behavior. Yeah. Okay. So. So did you just summarize it? Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, did you just. I just did a clarifying and said behavior. That was all. Okay. So you paraphrased me using one word. That would be a word. paraphrase. Wow. So sometimes a paraphrase would be really brief. In fact, mm. if you have to breathe in order to, if you have to take a breath to finish your paraphrase, it's no longer a paraphrase. about that person. Oh, really? Okay. It's about you if you have to take a breath. The paraphrase is really brief, and it doesn't even have to be a complete sentence. It wasn't? No. Wow. It wasn't, because you can just let it float out there, and the person, when they're understood, they'll just agree okay. or not. They'll say, like, you did, yeah, and if I said no, you'd have corrected me. Okay. So uh, let's, let's try... Uh, I'll try to not par paraphrase you okay. well, and we'll see what happens. So, uh, t so t talk some more about that idea of, of uh, maybe group work or uh, yeah, let's put it with students. So, so you're talking to me about about group working and having cooperative groups or whatever it is. So, um, in cooperative yeah. groups, mm -hmm. usually there's a student who sits back and says, mm -hmm. "I don't care." There's a student mm -hmm. who says, "I'll do all the work," mm -hmm. and the other two are kind of just caught in the middle. And I think, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, yeah. who's really doing the learning here? Mm. And I'm worried that not all four, yeah. all four um, kids are actually getting the sure. learning. So it's about the worksheet. No. What do you mean a worksheet? Yeah. No, it's about how the kids put in enough energy oh. so that they're all learning the content rather than just one or two in the group. Yeah. So it's, it, it moves into their relationships with each other. It does. Yeah. And <laughs> wow, that first paragraph <laughs> paraphrase was awful. Yes, it was. I, mean, I didn't even know where you were coming from. I obviously hadn't been heard. <laughs> and then I had to tell you again. And and you were fine with it. Yes, the second yeah, time it was you're good. You're fine with it. We were fine with it. So it's kind of interesting. You just kind of put them out there, and and so it's thinking about that idea. So uh, so for you, it's about. Uh, so for you, you're concerned about. So for you, you're wondering, you know, it's, 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 it's just laying out what you just said and just kind of using some different words that we try to do and, and relax a little bit. You don't have to be right when you yeah, paraphrase. Yeah, that is a big aha, yeah. that I don't, have to, I don't have to be thinking mm -hmm. exactly about what you said or mm -hmm. I don't have to even cover the whole mm -hmm. thing. I can kind of just mm -hmm. kind of cram it together and mm -hmm. give you the big idea. Because mm -hmm. it's about the other person. Right. Yeah. Interesting. So that works. All right. So what happens, though, if you get mm. someone who goes, I was in the meeting, yeah. I was working yeah. hard, it's yeah. really, I can't believe how, yeah. how those other people were acting like yeah. just idiots. 
Oh, so you really have a standard for what you'd like to see. Absolutely, and why can't they do it? I, it's frustrating. I was Absolutely. so frustrated. And you just moved me to another paraphrase. Oh, we sorry. just did a shift conceptual focus. <laughs> That's all right. Oh, well. But the idea that we're getting at is if somebody comes at you, then you got to go back to them. And you, and you match it. You match so the energy. You see, so even if you were doing a clarifying uh, paraphrase, mm -hmm. you would still match the energy. Absolutely. If I yeah. just if I had said yeah. something as simple as, so I walked in the room and there was mm -hmm. chaos yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Kids weren't listening. Mm -hmm. The um, student teacher was sitting mm. with one kid while he, kids were throwing stuff. You bet. There is stuff everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, and so that would be. Matching my energy. And just. Just yeah. allowing me to think that I have really been heard by you yes. and understood. And then sometimes when we match the energy, it's up to you mm -hmm. how you'd like to do it. My tendency from how I've been trained is if somebody's going a lot of energy like that, I'm, I'm probably not going to look at you. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm probably going to turn and direct the energy here. Okay. I guess for sub now that I'm thinking about for several reasons. If I if I stay this way and your energy shifts, eventually it might hit me. Right. So I want to be able to keep it. I want to be able to keep it this way. Okay. And shift it so that when you do take a breath, ah, oh, so then then you can just kind of relax. Yeah, yeah. So big ideas here. Let me see if okay. I can paraphrase you very quickly. Clarifying is just making sure people are heard. Yep. That you try and match their energy. Mm -hmm. That when you're doing that and it's high energy, you kind of want to look away from them. And if you don't do it correctly, it's okay because they were absolutely they will fix it. That works. I know that you said there were three. Yes. I understand clarifying. Mm -hmm. Not sure I understand the second one. Summarizing. Summarizing. Okay, so summarizing. So imagine a couple of ways of looking at it. <clears throat> so let's take one on one, mm -hmm. and let's take the idea that a person has just dumped a whole lot. Of information. Okay. Talk, 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 talk. And <clears throat> you'd like to paraphrase them for several reasons. One is you want them to feel they've been heard and understood so they okay. don't repeat themselves because right. <laughs> they said too much. And the other one is that if they feel understood, they might actually stop talking. Wow. And you could maybe ask a question or redirect or something like that. So, so this would be like an auditory processor who's throwing out ideas again and again and again. Yeah. Just trying to, yeah. you know, figure mm -hmm. out where they're coming from, mm -hmm. and you're trying to help them. Absolutely. Okay. So on one hand, you have a person that's highly auditory, talk, 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 and on the other hand, you have this desire to move them beyond. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're really trying to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, so that's a summary paraphrase. So on one hand, and on the other. Oh, so what you're actually doing is boxing ideas. Absolutely. Sort of yeah, and you can use location. Oh, I never thought about that. Well, we do it naturally. You've been in a hundred conversations where you say, you know, on one hand we got this problem, and on the other hand we got right, right. and we we just do that. So, so when we're talking with somebody and and we're listening and we're engaged and in rapport and all that stuff, and you literally can do it. So for you, there's a mm, and and also a okay. And then once they do what you just did, was yeah okay, yeah, that's right. Then you can you could you know, probe, move the conversation forward. Okay. We're just looking at paraphrasing right now. Okay. You know, that idea of being listened to and understood. All right, so I'm going to play me. Okay. <laughs> trying to auditorily process a problem. All right, sounds good. And um, so I <clears throat> have to meet with my supervisor, okay. and I have about 14 things I mm -hmm. want to talk to her about. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to her about evaluation. I want to talk to her about supervision. I want to talk to her about okay. how she should um, mm -hmm. use the PD that we're about to have yeah. and what things should be thrown out, what mm. things we should keep. And I also want to talk to her about how this is going to affect us long term right. and also all the materials that have got mm. to be revised. I mean, those are just a few things that I can think of right now yeah. that I need to talk to my boss about. Hmm. So, you have a few things here, it sounds like. On one hand, you have what's like happening right now. Right. And then you also have what's coming up mm -hmm. in the future. And it's also about how you're going to work with your boss, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, and I, as I look at it, I, I didn't realize that hmm. there were... Almost three different categories of things yeah. I was thinking about with my boss, yeah. but now I can prioritize sure. because if I don't work with my boss first, the other two categories mm. aren't going to make a difference. Mm. So that was really helpful. Thanks. Yeah. So you see it as a pathway. 
Yeah, absolutely. Important. Yeah, absolutely. I now know what I need to do first. Beautiful. Wonderful. So that would be a summarizing. So okay. the person, you're not, you're not, you know, with paraphrases, sometimes people think you're correcting people or something. Really, all you're doing with a paraphrase is listening to them. And as you heard, you know, you acted out all that information, well, that's all present. And so if we say it in a way that for them, you let them wrap their head around it, yeah, they've been understood, they've been listened to, and, and then what's really interesting, there's some insight that comes out of it. Absol and a yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That was amazing. So that's what's fun. Boy, you're special. <laughs> Thanks. Anything else you want to add about that one? I don't think so. That's just summarizing. I guess it's uh, use location. Okay. Got to listen. Listen for the category so you can categorize okay. for the person. And... You'll notice that when you lay out all that information and finish talking, the one thing that, that we did here, there was kind of a long pause mm -hmm. before yeah. the paraphrase started. I was worried about you. Yeah, well, sometimes you have to... Sometimes you just have to give a little space mm -hmm. to, to letting, letting it settle for a minute, especially with someone who's high auditory because they're probably going to add some more information, but you don't want them to. So if you look like you're thinking mm -hmm. with that little handout, they probably won't interrupt you. I almost did, I know, but I couldn't. Know. So I understand mm -hmm. that there are three kinds of paraphrasing okay. and clarifying is the first one. Yep. And the idea of summarizing, kind of helping people mm -hmm. organize their thoughts. Mm, yeah. But the third one confuses me. What is it? So the third one, we, we call it shift conceptual focus. And from, a, like from the neck up and slightly to the left explanation is that we are uh, listening to someone talk and we're shifting from maybe concrete to abstract or abstract to concrete. And it's usually, when we go abstract, it's usually around beliefs and values. So you're not really talking about the content anymore. No. You've now moved to the reason that they're saying things. Yeah. Okay. We've moved away from here, mm -hmm. and as as Marty Marty Linsky talks about, we're we're down here now. Okay. With this shift conceptual focus. And and why would you do a shift conceptual focus as opposed to clarifying or yeah. summarizing? Uh, I think there's a number of reasons. One of the reasons that we might shift people is that sometimes in conversations or in meetings, people are, are uh, metaphorically lost in the weeds. Mm. And when they're in the weeds, they're in a lot of detail. And that can become overwhelming for yeah. groups to work with. So if we can shift them to a higher level of abstraction, so instead of talking about whether there's paper, pens, and pencils in the classroom, you shift it to the idea that students are maybe capable of doing something or have the knowledge and skills to do it, that shifts you out of that detail stuff. Okay. The other reason that we like to think about, have the ability to do a shift conceptual focus is that, is that sometimes people get spun up in meetings and they get emotional. Really? And they get, yeah, and they get aggressive and they have all kinds of things that get in the way. And if we can summarize in a way that taps their values, what they hold core to their belief about something, then they get a sense that they've been understood and they've been understood through their values. And when we're understood through our values, we feel good. Really? And when we feel good, we're not going to be as angry as we were 10 seconds earlier. Oh. So. If it works, it's, it's wonderful. It's awesome. Okay. It's awesome to so do. So how do you yeah. do this shift? You have to listen, and again, we're going to listen not on the surface of the words, we're going to listen underneath, and so we're going to listen for the message that's below that surface that's going to be revealed a lot in, in, in how they're talking, like whether they're talking with anger or disgust mm -hmm. or contempt or happy and excited, you know, that sort of thing. You're going to name the emotion in in this paraphrase and probably the value that's underneath it and when we name that emotion and value then then uh, people love people love that okay so you have to be authentic 
and what I mean by authentic is that I don't want to, I would never ask someone to lie, to paraphrase, so be honest with, with what you're saying. I think the, <clears throat> I think the hook to avoid in a paraphrase is to realize in your mind when you're paraphrasing someone is that you are not agreeing with them. Oh, you're not? No. What are you doing then? You're saying something so they feel listened to and understood. So, so you, yeah. all you want to do is make sure they're heard, but you don't necessarily have to agree with them. That Absolutely becomes some, not. that becomes That's the next something part. Something entirely different. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, and if it's an emotion that's spun up and getting in the way, then if they're heard and understood, they'll have the emotion less. Okay. Yeah. It's an example. Okay. So. So let's let's try it. Can you uh, can you get into whatever you'd like? Get into whatever you'd like, and let's just see what happens. Okay. So I walk into this meeting, yeah. and yeah. the people are so stupid. <laughs> I hate stupid people. It's a waste of my time. Yeah. They don't get oh, it. I'm like, geez. how many times do yeah. I have to say this? Oh. Enough already. You're fed up. Fed I am up. so oh, fed geez. up. Jeez. Yeah. I'm so fed up. Why don't they understand? <laughs> Why can't people be more like you? Exactly. You know, uh, it's huge. Really? Yeah. So. <laughs> Did you just? We know each other, so we can get away with that. But yeah. So you're fed up. I'm fed up. And then the idea of more people like you, it fits the personality to get away with that. And you can see the shift. You can feel the shift. Right. I took yeah. my arms down. Absolutely. Can I try another one? Absolutely. Let's okay. go for it. Okay. All right. So when I walk yeah. into schools mm -hmm. and I walk into classrooms okay. and I know there's been all of this mm -hmm. training that's gone on mm -hmm. and they haven't implemented anything. Yeah. All that time, all that money, all the resources, mm. what's my job then? Yeah. Because I have given them mm. what they need and they're not using this. Mm -hmm. It is just so frustrating. I don't know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I have to make a difference mm. and I'm not making a difference and I'm thinking, why are you paying me? Well, I know why you're paying me mm -hmm. because I'm doing all this hard work. Mm. I'm done. I'm like, enough. So it's really about professionalism. It is. Yeah. How, it, and why is it that I can see it, but no one else can? <laughs> so that paraphrase was really brief. It was brief. And you never talked about professionals, and you didn't talk about professionalism, but there, underneath all of that was this idea of a, a standard, and there are choices you make when you're doing paraphrasing. Okay. As I'm listening, I chose to go with the idea of professionalism, and I was debating, maybe I should go with your standards of work, or maybe I could have gone with the expectations you hold for others. Or I could have gone with the idea that you do work, why don't other people do work? So there's all these choices you made, yeah. and it probably wouldn't have made a difference as to which one, because they all tapped into my patterns. Okay, and I was just gonna ask you, when you heard those four, did anyone sound a little better to you? No, I'm, they're they, all good. They all would have worked, yeah. right? So you have lots of freedom when you paraphrase. Isn't so, that nice? Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. It's probably the only time you do. Yeah. But then my question to you is, mm -hmm. what happens when you're trying to shift mm -hmm. um, and, and you don't hit it right? So if you, uh, you get corrected. Okay. And if you're careful with the language and you always say you or for you, or, or you can even take the you out and use it. Okay. So it's about the professionalism. Okay. And then that person will say, no, it's not about the professionalism. It's really about holding people accountable. And so they'll give you that more yeah, information, they, they even do. though. They do. And even though what I'm saying mm -hmm. didn't use any of those words, what you did is you kind of took all of the ideas and kind of tried to figure out what did I really believe or what that did was, I value? That was it. And that's why I went with professionalism. Took a shot. Took a shot. Okay, okay. you value professionalism. We'll see what happens. Of the three kinds yeah. of paraphrasing we talked mm -hmm. about, which one do you feel is the most useful or can be used the most often? I, uh, I don't know. I know what I do. And I, I favor the shift conceptual focus. And partly why I favor shift conceptual focus is because for me, when I'm working with people is I tend to want to change their uh, I want to change the metabolism in the room and make it more useful. So that one, I pretty much go to that one pretty quickly. And you're an expert at this. Mm, I, I'm a practitioner. You have been practicing a long <laughs> yes. time. So the expectation yeah. isn't that people can Im immediately use any one of the three oh, that they no. really have to practice. You absolutely have to practice. Okay. Practice and in a safe place before you need it. Okay. Yeah. 
So practice with people and you're saying, I am practicing this skill. You could do that. Or go to a restaurant and practice with your waiter or waitress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we learned about the three kinds of yep. paraphrasing. Is there anything else I really should be aware of? No. Okay. Done. Thanks. And if you were going to think of something else, what it would be would be the nonverbal patterns with a paraphrase. Okay. So there's a bunch of them. Uh, first one is uh, maybe matching, having that idea of matching and mirroring. Right. So if uh, if somebody's talking to you and they're they're saying, you know, I want to da 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 da, then you're gonna do that. Similarly, not exactly the same mm -hmm. because that's that's irritating. If you completely do exactly what the other person does, and uh, in fact, if you want to be really skilled in the mirroring of, of gestures, do a, th a four to six second delay. So mm -hmm. if a person goes like that. And about four, there you go, in a nice delay, and then you can do it. Pausing. Pausing. And when you pause, you have to breathe. So the idea is that pausing does several things. It gets some oxygen in the body, so people be receptive and thoughtful and mindful. And the other thing is it can slow the pace of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's up there. So we want to do that. And if you're paraphrasing by breathing yourself, you're going to be more resourceful. Because it takes a lot of energy to do this. And also, does it give you some time to think? Always time to think. Okay, so pausing yeah. is a good thing. Yeah, kind of like the classroom, pausing in the classroom, okay. right? Then the other thing that you can think about is what we do with our eyes when we paraphrase. Hmm. And there's no absolutes. One way of thinking about it is that when it's a positive interaction going on, do that. If it starts to spin up a little bit and the energy is a little intense, then get ready to redirect it someplace. And, and but not at the person. Not, yeah, not at the person. You don't <laughs> want to do that, but you could do this. You know about that idea of the, like if you if you say to me, I went to this terrible meeting. So say that. I went to this terrible oh, meeting. Oh man, that just is awful, right? Oh. So you turn your body, you redirect over here, I'm not gonna make eye contact with you okay. because I don't wanna be awful, right? That yeah. sort of idea. I can't stand it, right? That sort of. So you wanna be able to redirect it and kind of turn off a little okay. bit. So eye contact. So gestures, breathing, eye contact, third point, certainly matching. The matching thing's big. If, okay. if that person is talking this way because it went to a meeting and I can't believe how Tom acted back there. <clears throat> you have to be willing to, to mirror that. Okay. So if I were to respond, sounds like you're really angry. You think? <laughs> right. This is not going to work. Right. So you'd have to come yeah. back and say, oh my gosh, you must be so there you go. angry. Abs that that's what you want to do. Yeah. So being able to be comfortable in your own skin, right. having the emotion of an energy, <laughs> <laughs> having the energy of the emotion without having the emotion. Right. Okay. And that's that's, that's a hard. big one. That's acting. That's a, it is acting. And you're doing it with good intent to be able to help people work better together. Kendall, I love the paraphrasing. Absolutely. I think it's really going to yeah. make a difference. So you find it useful. I am fine. Yeah. It was a good Absolutely. paraphrase. Thank you. <laughs> On the other hand... Yeah. Is in a conversation, mm -hmm. what do you do next? You just paraphrase, 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 yeah. paraphrase. So you're wondering, you're wondering what would follow a paraphrase. I am wondering yeah. what you would do. So, next. so that would be helpful for you. That would be very helpful. Thank so you'd you. like to know. If you paraphrase me again, I'm going to hit you. Right, it becomes irritating, it, right? Very like irritating. Anything becomes irritating. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for moving on. So we have to remember the purpose of the paraphrase, and the purpose is for that person to feel they've been listened to and understood. Okay. If they are, you're done. You're done. You don't, for That's that it. moment, you're done. I was going to say, but not with the conversation. No, no, oh, not with oh. the conversation. So now you can move into the idea of, of maybe inquiry. So you could ask a probing question, or you could ask a naive question. Okay, or, what's the difference between the two? <clears throat> so a probing question would be something as simple as, so tell me more about, and whatever okay. the topic is, or what for you is most important, or for you, what's most challenging? And I'll get to naive in a minute. The, the reason to ask the probing question is that you're going to ask it anyway. Mm -hmm. If we paraphrase first, then that person is going to be more psychologically receptive okay. to being questioned. Because they, they feel like they've been heard. Absolutely. And so that question is now inviting. 
because they've been understood, they want to give more information. Okay. And if we don't paraphrase first and we just ask the question, it can feel like an, uh, like an interrogation. Yeah, you okay, know, like I can see that. Pew, pew, pew. So the naive question is a question where if, um, it's kind of contextual. The naive question is when you're going to ask a question that you're not stupid or naive about. It's a naivete about the process that's occurring in the room. Hmm. So it would be something like somebody paraphrases and they say, yeah, and it might be something like, well, I'm really curious how what we're talking about right now connects with the topic we're oh, okay. exploring. So very tentative, very da, 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 da. you go through a point when you ask it, and you're asking specifically about the process. That's what you're doing. You're really not out in there thinking anymore at that time. And you're and you're not. You really are not naive, but you want them to express Absolutely. an opinion. Because for idea. them, it's absolutely connected. Okay. And if you say, "Well, how's that connected?" Then that sounds challenging. But right. if you ask it naively, then you can. Okay. Then you can. And it's it. kind of a tone of voice. It's kind Always. of the way you look. It's Always. the third point. Yeah. Okay. So. Is there so anything the, else you can do after you paraphrase? I, th I think, <laughs> I d I'm not sure how to answer what the, the question is around the idea that we're, we're looking at the street skills right now. Right. So here's this long conversation. You're in a meeting for an hour, hour and a half. Here's one tool, paraphrasing. Here's three types of paraphrasing. Our reason for using it, so they think they're understood, mm -hmm. listened to, and heard. <clears throat> then once that's done, we have psychological permission to probe. So now oh, we can get okay. to new information, new ways of looking at things. If you want people to share information in a meeting, they're more likely to share if they've been listened to and understood. Mm, okay. They're more likely to share if you make the thinking visible to the whole group also. Right. Because sometimes we want a group to have collective understanding. And I've mentioned understanding real specifically because I'm also not asking for any of us to agree yet. Oh. This is just about understanding. It's getting ideas on the table. Absolutely, okay. and through their perspective. Okay. In, in a sense, you could almost label it empathy. That if you understand from that person's perspective the thing, the emotion, and the values of it, you can choose later if you agree with it, but what you've done in the room is you've, you've labeled and identified it and made it visible. You understand it. Okay. Uh, so let's say that I've done the, the uh, paraphrasing, mm -hmm. I've done the probing, okay. the ideas are on the table. At what point do you give input or what point do you mm -hmm. start to direct the conversation? Okay. So one way of directing a conversation is really leading to what your outcomes are. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about paraphrasing and kind of living around the idea of dialogue about developing understanding. Okay. And eventually we're going to get to the idea of making decisions. That's why we have committees. That's why we have meetings. So there's no one answer to your question. How do you know? Well, one way you know is when the group understands. Okay. So sometimes you have to check have somebody explain their understanding and see if people see that the same way. Not agree yet, but see it the same way. So, yeah. So if I'm having a conversation okay. though with you, and I've done my paraphrasing, yep. I've probed you, and so now you're kind of stuck in, a, in the mud in a problem, mm -hmm. I can then say at that point, because we have, you have been heard and yes. you have been understood, yes. and I have gotten all the information on the mm -hmm. table, I might say, might I suggest or have you thought about? And so you can give input. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. that you've done this process to get to be inclusive. You bet. And that will probably move people more quickly than if you had just oh. started with, okay, guys, here's an idea. Yeah, okay. it doesn't work that way. And in fact, you made me think of, of something from the standpoint it goes to a naive question that once you reach that point, it could be something like, oh, I'm curious then. I'm wondering <clears throat> in your minds, how much more information do we need before we choose? And that might then lead into the discussion and the decision. Absolutely. And then you okay. just move it. Yeah. So being a leader okay. is not really about standing up there and spewing <laughs> forth. It's more about understanding, yeah. building the relationships yeah. so that you as That's a group huge. can be moved or even in an individual conversation mm -hmm. you can be you can move together. 
I'll even shift it away from the leader and just say the act of leading. Yeah. To be of influence on groups to get the work done. The hard work done it is what we're talking about. Because we're not talking about positional leadership. We're no. just talking about those. In that moment. Yeah, exactly.